Hey, this is Mark Anthony. Um, everyone wants to know what my premise was that I submitted to what most likely and probably did get the overturn of Roe versus Wade. It's very simple. Um, the premise is that a male means nothing in producing a child and has no rights. Roe versus Wade states that, <laughs> and the laws govern that, or did. I technically did. You have two involved. Now you say, but it's a woman's body. Um, not a pregnancy. And that was also part of my premise. That during pregnancy, there's more involved than just a woman. I'm not getting into safety's sake um, of the mother. That's a different story. And it is, in my opinion, yes. Obviously, you abort the child then. It's logic, because it's safety's sake. But it's safety of the third party, the unborn child. The best interests to suit the unborn child, which the mother's carrying, go to the mother or the father, that the father have at least some rights in the argument, because you've got two in the equation plus a third. If one says, well, no, I don't want the child. You have to start looking at the rights of the third, the unborn child, and also the individual that says, yes, I want the child. Because you always err in the side of caution, which means err in the side of caution You want as many lives to survive as possible. Roughly saying that. I know people may say no, but it's better to bring a life into existence than to not. Which is true, that was part of my premise. Because it's a human life. You always support human life and the rights of human life. True. So, given the governance of one not wanting to be a part of it, the other wanting to be a part of it, they have some rights. Sure. But that roughly explains my premise and how I got it overturned. It's because the father got no rights whatsoever. He's a husband that's a little problematic. And here's why. Because he has rights to that child just as much as the mother know. But in some ways, in a lesser way, yes. Because he's the father. And he helped produce that child. Fact. It's a plain simple fact. That it takes two to produce a child. And the best you can do is not tell people what to do, but say, we're going to look out for the rights of the father, the mother, as in whole or in part. And that's what it came down to, is in part. And if there's a problem, talking about disagreement, you don't end life over a disagreement that's stupid. It's immature and stupid. Which means the child possibly gets born. Doesn't guarantee it, but possibly gets born. That's the most important factor right then and there. In my book, and people agreed with me, which is true. But that's what my premise was. Was the father has rights also. Not 100%, not 50%, but has rights. Even it's not just as much as doubt. And that you get stuck in the law as well. Because then he'll say, I have no rights, I can walk away. I've got some rights, I'm only slightly responsible. So that's fine. And this states he's got some rights. And I understand states may argue this point. 
that you say he's got equal rights, then he doesn't have equal responsibility, which is true. Yes, I'm this smart. Enough said. Smart Union signing off. Thanks. Bye.